On today's show, do you believe in miracles? Because a miracle happened at Yankee Stadium last night. We'll talk about it. We'll also preview tonight's matchup between the Yankees and the Angels. And it's June 1st, which means we can talk about the standings now. And we're going to. And then we're going to look at the Yankee schedule again, just to see how things are set up for the next month. Because the next month is pretty important. All next on Locked on Yankees. <laughs> You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Yankees fans. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Stacey Gotsoulias. I'd like to thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. It's free and available on all platforms, including Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can watch and subscribe to Locked On Yankees on YouTube. Also hit the like button on our videos, comment if you feel so inclined, and when you get into your car, you can tell your smart device to play podcast Locked On Yankees. Today's episode is brought to you by Blue Nile. Make your moments sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Yankees listeners, you get $50 off a purchase of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement. Use Locked On at checkout. Now that's pretty exciting. Not as exciting as the Yankees actually scoring runs for Jordan Montgomery and giving him his first win of the season, finally. Took until the last day of May for this to happen. And I said it yesterday. The thing that worried me about this matchup was the fact that the Angels were riding, well, not riding, you're riding on a five-game winning streak. You're sliding on a five-game losing streak. So they were sliding into Yankee Stadium on a five-game losing streak. The Yankees had lost two in a row. And it was one of those something's got to give sort of situations. And you wondered if maybe the day off would benefit the Angels because they were on such a slide. Apparently not. Apparently not. Uh, Noah Syndergaard. Whew. He had a rough first inning. He had a very rough first inning. Jordan Montgomery didn't. Not at all. But Noah Syndergaard did. The Yankees scored four runs in the bottom of the first. Anthony Rizzo doubled, scored Aaron Judge. Gleyber Torres doubled, scored Rizzo. And then after Miguel Andujar hit a single, Matt Carpenter hit a home run. Matt Carpenter now has more home runs than Aaron Hicks. And he's only been with the team, what, a week? It's that mustache. It's the mustache. That's what's fueling Nestor Cortez. And that's what's fueling Matt Carpenter. Maybe we should get... Joey Gallo. No, I'm not going to I'm not going to bag on Joey Gallo. He had a good game last night. I think putting him in the bottom of the lineup is actually helpful. And the fact that he was playing in right field and he likes playing in right field. Hey, there's something to that. Abby and I have discussed this on the show. When you're comfortable in the field and you're playing in a position that you feel comfortable and you're used to, it helps you at the plate. We've seen it with Glaber Torres. Now, I don't expect Joey Gallo to play right field over Giancarlo Stanton, but until Stanton feels better, just stick Gallo in right field. Boone, just do it. So the Yankees are up 4 nothing <laughs> after one. Then they go up 5 nothing after two. And I will admit this. I've mentioned it on the show many times. I saw the Yankees go down 2-0 to the Angels in the top of the first inning against Domingo Herman, or the Angels against D Domingo Herman. Then Shohei Otani comes in, and you're thinking, this game's over. Then the Yankees proceed to score seven runs off him, knock him out of the game before he even pitches a full inning. And the Yankees still ended up losing that game. So I was not comfortable with a 4-0 lead. I was not comfortable with a 5 nothing lead. I was not comfortable until the last out of that game. I was burned last June 30th. I don't trust anything anymore. Even And I even thought to myself, well, Aroldis Chapman's injured, so there's a good chance that they might not blow the game because he's not going to blow the game because he's the one that gave up the game-tying Grand Slam in that game that I saw. So that thought was in my head the entire game. 
Well, he's not playing, so maybe this is a better omen. <laughs> and it was. It turned out to be true. Can you believe it? So Gallo singled in the second inning. LeMayhew hit a double. That's how they got the um, the second, the fifth run. <laughs> and then it took a little while. It was quiet for a good four innings there. And then the bottom of the sixth, the Yankees scored again. Jose Trevino had a great game last night. He was three for four with a home run. He made a great play at first. Well, he threw the ball to first, picked, picked a guy off, surprised the hell out of everyone, even Anthony Rizzo. It seemed like Rizzo was surprised, but he made the good play at first, and, and you know, they got the out. And it was, it was the third out of the inning, and it was yeah, – Trevino's enjoying being a Yankee, and that's fun to see. Um, it's fun to see the catcher – position actually contributing both offensively and defensively for the Yankees. And, you know, the Yankees have tightened things up defensively. Speaking of that, Isaiah Kiner Falefa nailed Mike Trout on a diving play, diving play to his right. And he gunned him out at first. It was tremendous. And it's just so much nicer feeling comfortable about the defense that the Yankees are putting out every game. Joey Gallo playing in right field after the game, he was talking about how comfortable he is in right field. And wouldn't you know it? He had a couple of hits last night. Hmm. Isn't that so strange? He's two for three. He walked. He did have one strikeout, but two for three with a walk and a strikeout. That's perfectly fine. It's better than being 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. <laughs> it's a lot better. <laughs> but he was talking about how comfortable he is in right field. And, you know, we talk about it all the time with some of these players. If they're comfortable in the field, playing a position that they like being in, it helps them hit better because they're just comfortable throughout the game and not worried about what they're going to do on defense and not thinking about things, you know? We see it with Glaber. He's so much better at second base. So much better. And I think having someone like Isaiah Kiner Falefa playing shortstop takes the pressure off of Glaber. Thank goodness. But yeah, Joey Gallo, two hits. Actually, the only regular who didn't have a hit last night was Judge. But he walked and scored. And he only had one strikeout, so he was 0 for 3 with a strikeout. And Glaber was 2 for 4 with that RBI. Trevino, as I said, 3 for 4. Did I say that? He, wait, did I say that? 3 for 4 <laughs> with two runs batted in. He hit a home run. He had that amazing play where he threw the ball to first, nailed. I can't remember who it was at first base. And then... He also scored the Yankees' sixth run by evading the catcher and having to double back, tag home, and he was safe. So yeah, overall, it was a good game. In a moment, we will talk more about the game, specifically Jordan Montgomery, who was probably sitting there thinking, holy hell, they finally scored for me. It's a miracle. As Barry Manilow sang in 1975. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the matchup for tonight. And then we'll look at the schedule. But first, whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating with a milestone moment, find jewelry as unique as her with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. Blue Nile has simple online tools that let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as setting style. Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft her perfect engagement ring. So each ring is one of a kind. That's cool. If I were to have an engagement ring, size five, I have tiny fingers. I would want it to be custom made. So if you want to customize an engagement ring or diamond stud earrings, online jeweler Blue Nile will allow you to create bigger, more brilliant piece than you can imagine at a price you won't find at a traditional jeweler. Make your moments sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com and Locked On Yankees listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement. 
Use code locked on. That's code locked on. Plus, every order is insured. It ships free. It arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. So shop stress free and find your forever peace. Go to bluenile.com today. Thanks for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast, where you get recaps of Major League Baseball games with analysis from our local experts who are taking fans through the season like no other network. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So let's talk about Jordan Montgomery, who finally got his first win of the year on May 31st. (laughs) Unbelievable. (laughs) Again, through no fault of his own. His first 10 starts, there were six of them where the offense didn't do anything for him. It's just, I don't know, they did it to him last year. There was a month and a half stretch where they just couldn't score for him. And it's, I don't know. I keep joking that they need to put a disguise on Jordan Montgomery and make them think he's someone else. Maybe he needs to grow a mustache like Carpenter and and Nestor Cortez. Maybe that'll work. So he lasted seven innings which is what you want to see heading into June, your starters lasting that long and giving the depleted bullpen a break. So good job, Jordan Montgomery. One run on four hits. The one run came late in the game. He gave up a home run. He threw 87 pitches in those seven innings. So that's also good. It wasn't like he threw 120 pitches. Not that that would ever happen because I don't think Boone would ever let anyone get to 120 pitches. (laughs) So the one run on four hits, he walked one, struck out four. His ERA for the season is 3.04. Now, as for the Yankees as a whole, they were two for eight with runners in scoring position. They only left five on base. Now, the Angels, as I mentioned, they're now on a six-game losing streak. They're still in second place in the AL West at 27 and 23. But that shows you how bad the other teams are doing no they're not doing bad in the bottom of the division we'll look in a bit they had seven hits Andrew Velasquez was one of them Jared Walsh had two Otani had one Trout was 0 for 4 with a strikeout he left three on base he's still batting 302 he's still an amazing player and as I said he nearly made that play on the Rizzo ball it really could have been one of the plays of the year he looked like Superman flying through the air to try and catch that ball so Cindergard lasted two and one-third innings, gave up five runs on seven hits, no walks. He did not strike anyone out, and he gave up that home run to Carpenter. Now, Carpenter, after the game, said that facing Noah Cindergard now is different because he doesn't throw as hard as he used to. You know, Cindergard was one of those guys who was throwing 100 with regularity, like scarily, and he doesn't do that anymore. And... It feels like the players are adapting to that, and it's not as easy for him to get away with things anymore. But that really stands out to me. And I know it's only two and one-third innings, but no strikeouts at all. They were really getting good contact on him. So he is now – his ERA is now 4.02, and he's 4-3 and on the season. And this isn't the first time that he's exited a game early because he had that happen. I'm trying to remember which field it was. Oh, it was Texas. I was right. I was picture. Okay. So Cindergard had a very short outing on May 16th against Texas in Texas. He lasted two thirds of an inning. He gave up four runs on four hits. Then his next start against Texas was the complete opposite. And this happened at home. He lasted eight innings, gave up one run on four hits, didn't walk anyone, struck out five. And then last night happened. So it seems to be an every other game thing with Noah Syndergaard, which seems kind of strange. But that's the way baseball goes. You never know how things are going to go from night to night. And, you know, there are a lot of times when a pitcher... And I find this interesting. If I recall correctly, David Wells said that his bullpen session before his perfect game was horrible. He almost didn't want to pitch (laughs) because it went so badly. And then he went out and threw a perfect game. And, you know, it could be 
where a guy feels good before a game starts and then the Yankees happen. They're still a good team. They're 34 and 15 right now. And every time it feels like they're going to start a long losing streak, they recover. This didn't happen last year. Didn't happen in 2020 either. So this is a, it's obviously a different team. They have different people in some of the key positions. And it feels good to watch this team night in and night out. Because even if they do lose, most of the time, it you feel like they're not out of the game and they have a chance. You know, you don't feel defeated in, say, the sixth or seventh inning and think to yourself, well, they're not going to come back. You know, it's not like that this year, which is always a lovely thing. So tonight's matchup, Reed Detmers against Nestor Cortez. Now, I spoke about this yesterday on the preview. Detmers is the guy who got the no-hitter. The rookie who got the no-hitter. Good for him. That's awesome. No one's faced him. So the Yankees have not seen him. It'll be interesting to see how they hit against him. He's 2-2 two and two with a 4.65 ERA, 27 strikeouts. And let's see how he did in his last appearance. So the one, the one, the, <laughs> the no-hitter was against Tampa, by the way, which I forgot about. I forgot that it was Tampa. His next start against Texas, he lasted three and two-third innings, gave up three runs on three hits. And then against Texas again on the 25th, in his last start, he got the loss, gave up five runs on five hits in six innings. So we'll see what the Yankees do. Or how the Yankees do. Not what they, well, what they do, how they do, that works, right? (laughs) In a moment, we will look at the standings because... As Abby said many times, June 1st is when you're allowed to look at the standings because you're, you know, it's two months in. This is closer to the All-Star break. It makes sense to look at the standings. So we're going to do that and look at the schedule and see what's coming up for the Yankees. But first, our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. You can find the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs. The finals are starting. Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. And speaking of odds, the updated World Series odds are out. The Yankees are 6-1. to one. They were 9-1 to one on May 2nd and 12-1 to one on April 6th. So it's getting better. Only the Dodgers are ranked above them at 4-1 to one odds. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. So let's look at the standings because we're allowed to do that now. We've made it to June 1st. How did this happen? Honestly. <laughs> I remember feeling. Like, baseball would never come when the lockout was going on. And now that it's here, it feels like it's going too fast. Does anyone else feel that way? Let me know on Twitter if you're not watching this. And let me know on YouTube in a comment if you feel the same way. Does it feel like the season's going by too fast? It kind of does. Before you know it, it's going to be August. And we'll be thinking about, are they going to make the playoffs sort of thing? And that's... That's something to think about. So it's June 1st. Your New York Yankees are 34 and 15. Their run differential is plus 79. They're 18 and 7 at home, 16 and 8 away, and they're 11 and 6 against teams that are above 500. I had to read that right because I, you know, it's been a while since I've looked at. More than, less than. So, Toronto moved into second place. They're ahead of the Rays by half a game. They're five and a half back from the Yankees. The Rays are six. Boston's 11, 11 and a half. Baltimore's 14. Baltimore's not that far out. <laughs> Baltimore's 21 and 30. Now, their run differential is minus 43. And they're the only ones who were minus. Toronto has a zero. They're perfectly even right now. 
Tampa has a run differential of plus seven. Boston has a run differential of plus 16. So the Yankees have the best record in baseball. The Mets are pretty close. They're 34 and 17. And the Dodgers are also close at 33 and 16. They're obviously leading the NL West. San Diego's not too far behind them. Only three games back. And as for the Mets, I believe the Mets have the biggest lead. Yep, the Mets are way ahead of Atlanta. Atlanta is not doing well at all. They're under 500. They're 10 and a half games behind the Mets. Their run differential is minus 16. They're 14 and 14 at home, 9 and 13 on the road. And they're only two games ahead of both Philadelphia and the Miami Marlins. So yeah, it's it's interesting to look at the standings and see how certain teams are doing. But it's June 1st and the Yankees are still in first place. And that run differential is a good sign. I think the Dodgers are the only ones. Oh, yeah, okay. The Dodgers' run differential is plus 116. I believe Abby spoke about that last week. So they're still way above. The closest to the Yankees, the Mets, plus 72. So, yeah, both New York teams are in first place. But because of the Angels being on this six-game losing streak, and because the Astros are 7-3 and three in their last 10, the Astros are in first place now. So there's no more... There was that thing happening where the two LA teams and the two New York teams were in first place. That's done. That is not happening anymore because the Angels are now five games behind the Astros. It was fun while it lasted, though. That was pretty cool for both New York teams to be in first and both LA teams to be in first. So let's look at the Yankees' schedule, the scary, scary, scary schedule that's coming up. So I spoke about it last week. We're going to look at it again because this is a rough stretch coming up. So the series against the Angels continues. Then they play the Tigers for three. They're off Monday. They go to Minnesota for three. Then they come home to play the Cubs for three. They're off again on the 13th. They play Tampa for three. Now, this is the stretch that scares the absolute... I'm not going to say the word. Well, I will. Crap out of me, okay? From June 14th to June 30th, three against the Rays at home, three against the Blue Jays in Toronto, three against the Rays in Tampa... Four against the Astros at home, three against the Athletics at home, and a rescheduled game against the Astros on the 30th, rescheduled from April 4th, which was canceled because of the lockout. That is a frightening schedule. (laughs) That is a scary schedule. That is the time where we're going to find out if this Yankees team is for real. Mark that on your calendar. June 14th to June 30th. Rays, Blue Jays, Rays, Astros, A's, Astros for one game. And the Astros one game is in Houston. Let it sink in. Think about that. That is going to be rough. That is going to be rough. And I know a number of those games are at home which will help them. And as I just said, they're okay on they're they're better than okay on the road. But the the Blue Jays are doing a lot better now. They just swept Anaheim. As I said, they moved into second place in the AL East. They're starting to fire on all cylinders. Yeah. That that is the true test. Not that the Angels are the Angels are still a good team. They're just having a rough stretch. The Twins are pretty good. Yeah, this is a really, that's a rough schedule. Then it kind of eases up a little bit. July 1st through the 3rd, they're in Cleveland to play the Guardians. They're off on July 4th. Again, I spoke about this. With them being off Memorial Day and 4th of July just seems weird. They actually have four Mondays in a row off. 
The 18th is obviously because of the All-Star break, but they're off the 4th, the 11th, and the 25th of July. Kind of strange. But they're on the road for a while, from July 1st until July 10th. Cleveland, Pittsburgh for two, and the Red Sox for four. So yeah, this is a this is an interesting stretch. We'll see how the Yankees do. And, you know, if they make it out of that stretch over 500 or, you know, more than just over 500 and do really well, then you know this team is for real. I feel like they're for real right now, but I feel like that's the true test. Let me know if you agree with me on that. You might not agree with me on that, and that's perfectly fine. <laughs> you don't have to agree with me on everything, but I feel like that's... The second half of June is the true test. Let's just cross our fingers that, you know, some guys are back. Everyone's healthy. They're firing on all cylinders. The pitching still keeps up all their good performances. And, you know, by the end of June, we can exhale. Because that would be nice. On tomorrow's show, we'll recap tonight's game. We'll look ahead to the matchups for tomorrow night's game. We'll talk about any news that happens, if there's any new injuries to discuss, if any guys are coming back, you know, because we have some guys who may be coming back. The Yankees made it a point to post a video, just a quick, I don't know, three or four second shot of Giancarlo Stanton standing on the field with a bat over his shoulder. I don't know. So hopefully he'll come back soon because it feels like the Yankees need him. Didn't feel like they needed him last night. But during that five, no, four and five stretch, those final nine games of that really long stretch of 23 games in 22 days, it felt like they needed him in the games that he missed. So that would be a big boost. So that's it for this episode of Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'd like to remind you that you can listen to this show in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Stitcher, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. Again, like and comment on YouTube as well, and I will answer your comments or questions that you may have. And when you get into your car, you can tell your smart device to play podcast Locked On MLB. Make your second listen of the day, Locked On MLB. Paul Francis Sullivan, please call him Sully, brings you his unique perspective on the major leagues, both past and present. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. One more thing, if you could be so kind, please rate the podcast and spread the word about this podcast to your fellow Yankee fans. We would really appreciate it. Enjoy your Wednesday, and I'll talk to you all tomorrow.